Live from San Francisco, California, it's The Cube at VMworld 2014. Brought to you by VMware, Cisco, EMC, HP, and Nutanix. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're here live in San Francisco for VMworld 2012. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Dave Vellante, our next guest. I'm really proud to have Cheryl Chamberlain. I'm back on theCUBE. She's now the vice president of EMC's, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> she's the vice president of, of Global Partner Executive at Capgemini. I know you made a switch, I was just joking and kidding. Um, former EMC, worked at VMware. Really a great uh, insider at EMC Federation, also a friend of theCUBE. You were one of our original CUBE alums. Um, before women in tech was a hot thing, you were always on theCUBE. We love women to come on theCUBE, <laughs> so, and now it's hot to have women in tech, so congratulations, you're Thank a you. woman in tech. <laughs> <laughs> we're always welcome, no matter what. Anyone brings good content, we love it, and thanks for coming on theCUBE in all seriousness. Um, so, What's going on? I mean, Capgemini uh, is booming. Uh, all, their, all their competitors, Accenture, Deloitte, all these guys are really making some good business right now because cloud is hot. People yes. want to, they want to build out. Um, a lot of money's being spent, a lot of investment. So what are you doing at Capgemini and how's that tie into VMware and the Federation? Uh, no, great question, John. It's so good to be here with you. I remember the time that we sat at a VMware, kind of figuring out how we get you here year after year, and now I come here yeah. and here you Our are. Our fifth year. Yeah, that's great. Thank you it's very great. much. Yeah, but when you think about what v VMware is doing and how Capgemini is working very well with VMware, I reflect on coming in on Saturday night and sitting down with Pat Gelsinger, and Patrick Nicolay, who's the executive sponsor at Capgemini for this relationship. He's the CEO of Infrastructure. And when they talk, we're talking about things like social, mobile, analytics, the cloud. That's the sweet spot for everything that Capgemini does. But they look for their technology partners to really kind of build that framework so we can help customers go through digital transformation because the future. VMware uh, is very candid about it. We had Bill Fathers on earlier and Dave asked the pointed question, you know, economically, you know, service providers still, your customers, Bill, have to compete with Amazon. So, you know, they still have to be how are you helping them? And basically he said, we're bringing the R&D to the table. So, same thing sounds like with Capgemini. The relationship is very much one plus one equals three. You guys have to build the solutions for the customers yeah. and they're enabling. So, how do you connect with EMC and VMware uh, and the Federation and Pivotal as well. Is it a lot of executive briefings, joint product roadmaps? What are some of the things that you're doing to wire that together? Yeah, so Capgemini is not the product company, which is very good, but we develop the IP around the products that the tech companies have. And when I think about, you just said Pivotal, so business data lakes is something that Capgemini developed in partnership with Paul Moritz and his team. So listening to what customers need to do as they use data and analytics, and what can Capgemini do to help build the solutions that... So you are building IP around, so the yes. product company, VMware, loves this. Yes. And so does EMC and Pivotal. So what kind of IP are you guys using? Methodology, workflow? Is it actually software and big data? Can you share <laughs> some of that? Methodology? Absolutely, <laughs> of course. I'll give you all the IP so that you can figure out how to do it. We're going to extract <laughs> the IP out of her, share that with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but really what we do is we sit down as um, technology leaders. Um, mm -hmm. We're listening to what our customers are trying to do, how they're trying to solve their business problems, what they're thinking about when they're growing their business so that they can be transformational, and then we'll sit down with our technology partners and say, how do we integrate that to take this I got, I got to ask you a warm and fuzzy question because I think this really brings out some of the mega trends around open source. Collaboration and openness has been a big part of of the ethos of open source, Docker, huge success here, Nutanix is successful, people that are thinking differently and yet being open. So, you know, the, these relationships that you're involved in are basically, you know, you're connecting people together, but also openness is a big thing, but also protecting the IP. How has open source and this openness affected, in your opinion, the new generation of, of solution providers? That's a great question. Uh, do you know that I was invited to the open source think tank this past spring. No, so now I do. Yeah, went out to Napa and sat down with uh, the teams there. And really what we were talking about is how does open source help the internet of things? Because it's not just about open source, but it's how can we use the information that we're getting as we're using our devices and how can we integrate 
the next generation of success as we're doing that. So open source really is opening up a new world of collaboration and taking it forward. Are you looking I'm, up what I'm tweeting. Yeah, I'm really sure. sorry, Cheryl. <laughs> <laughs> Cheryl, get used to it. We live tweet, we, write, we respond to email. No, we <laughs> so it's my only chance to get a question in is when John starts tweeting. So, so talk about how, <laughs> Talk about how the business is transforming. I mean, companies like Capgemini, you know, half a decade ago, a decade ago, made a lot of money building up infrastructure and helping customers, you know, do all that heavy lifting. Um, that's changing, right? We're hearing so much about, you know, hyper-converged and converged and all that's sort of going away. Now, of course, Capgemini has always been focused more up the stack. Yes, definitely. Uh, but the, nonetheless, the business is, is changing in many ways. You know, the big SAP implementations, you know, are being taken in much smaller chunks. You're seeing Docker and you know, lighter weight applications. So how is Capgemini, you know, specifically, and just generally, your industry transforming? Yeah, you know, I, t I like to think about it around what you just said. If customers are consuming smaller amounts of technology, they're doing that because they're trying to solve business problems, not transforming their entire infrastructure. So what Capgemini is able to do is to listen to those customers and really translate what they're trying to achieve in their business. And I'll give you a very good example. Think about an insurance company. Today they have all of this information that they're gathering around, around their customers. They're using that information to figure out how do they give them better rates and better information. So that's part of the digital transformation that those insurance companies are using today. So Capgemini will partner with them to say, well this is how you can get that business information. This is the information that you're getting and this is how we can integrate it so that you can be more transformative when you're going to market. Yeah, so let's talk more about that transformation. So everybody, everybody uses the Amazon War Room example, right? In retail, <laughs> uh, every retail company has uh, an Amazon War Room. But, so talk about how the tip of the spear yes. for Capgemini. Um, how you go in and what the conversation is like and how you help companies transform. What's that discussion like? I mean, every business is transforming. Healthcare, financial services, talking about retail, governments transforming. Uh, what are those discussions like? Yeah, I mean, cloudification. Mm -hmm. So just think yeah, about Brazil. Sassification. Right, sassification. Right. Yeah. So it, it really is that conversation that you have with customers where you're listening to what they're trying to solve but you become part of their team as they're, as they're going through the decision making process and how they can transform their business. And another good example is, think about an agriculture company, right? They need to understand what's going on on the field. Is when will water be more important or not important? Mm -hmm. So really understanding um, from a digital, but from a ecosystem, how they can be more effective to grow seeds or get more capability out of their crops and their land. So we're sitting down with them and, and understanding it better. Another example is a, a shoe company. By the way, those are very shiny shoes you yeah. have today. <laughs> You're not going to get them wet later, <laughs> are just you? might. I yeah, know, okay, just checking. Hopefully not. <laughs> but think about it when you go into a shoe store and you, you see some shoes that you like and you identify them and then they're running around the back trying to find the shoes and come back, well, I don't have your size. So we will help that shoe organization or the shoe store to really use technology so that when you come and you say, you know, I like this style of shoe, they can say, well, I've got three, these three in, in stock. So you're not going through that waiting process. So using data information and product and inventory to better sell to their customers and be more successful. What are your big industries? What are, what are, I mean, yeah, you, so you definitely retail people, is very retail, strong, so oil and gas, that, yeah. financial services. These are all very strong industries for us. So the retail is interesting. I mentioned the Amazon War Room. It just seems like the whole, you just mentioned a great example. I, when my kids need shoes, I hate going to you know wherever it is, pick a you know sports store because it's just that, that experience yeah. you just described. It's like well, pick a shoe and then we'll see if we have it. Yes. You know, it's like and it's, then they it's, disappear. It's like trying to you know figure out a hotel that's all you know booked up. Well, it's not available on that or a show. It's not available right. on that date. So the whole retail experience has to change. And the brick and mortar guys understand this, I, I think, well. And the tech, it seems like the technology is finally here to change that shopping experience. You walk in the store, I think of a virtual shopping cart with a, in, a, in a physical world. Maybe even technologies to help me project what something's going to look like so I don't have to try on a million things. I mean, <laughs> I don't know, are, are those things really happening or is that just still pie in the sky? Oh, no, that, that is definitely happening because the retail stores are now competing with the online stores and the online experience. You talk about getting something mm -hmm. that fits you. You can go online and describe what your body type is and then give measurements 
and then they'll show what that design will look like on you. So the retail stores have to figure out how when I go into a store, they, they can fit me for what I want while I'm there, so I don't prefer to go online and get something that will truly fit. Now you mentioned Brazil when I changed the conversation, <laughs> but Brazil's a big deal for you guys. You have a center of excellence there, you got some partnerships down there. Uh, what's happened in Brazil? Why Brazil? I mean, you're obviously strong in Europe as, as well. Oh, as absolutely. US, but, but why Brazil? So the Brazil is a big investment, I think, for all of us to get into new industries and new markets. And Capgemini, not only did they invest in, in Brazil and a reseller and a partner, and they're doing a lot of work with Cisco there, they had EMC also co-invest. Right. So we're looking at that market from an oil and gas and big data perspective, and that's where you'll see us come together and really start to drive change in a, in a market where you have to work with the people that understand the direction that they're going. So the energy uh, boom has been a tailwind yes, for your business. Absolutely. Uh, but it's, it's also, um, there's a lot of uncertainties, right? It's hard to predict. Well, so what's, you know, what are you guys seeing there? I mean, is it, obviously you said it's a big part of your business. Um, expanding into new areas, What's, uh, what are you seeing there? Yeah, well, when we go into new markets like that, we are looking at it from an industry perspective. Mm -hmm. we, just, we just talked about oil and gas and what's going on, and that's because we're always talking to the customers at the top of the food and the transformational layer, right. and really thinking about it from a digital transformation perspective. Awesome, so uh, yep. well, you look back at, uh, you know, the, like you guys were talking about, the VM worlds. we first got here in 2010, lot, really appreciate your help in oh, making yes. that happen, but wow, what a, what a transformation we've seen here. Yes, and we're transforming yep. in the lives that we yep. lead, right? right. Yeah. So uh, are you going to transform in just a little while and <laughs> are you taking some sort of ice bucket challenge today that we can all see? I'm just trying to figure this out. <laughs> no, that will not be happening today, although I'm very excited uh, to take the ice really? bucket challenge. Uh, <laughs> With a jacket, without a jacket? Uh, I'll strip down to the boxers, <laughs> maybe that would be great headlines. There you um, go. Could do some streaking here in San Francisco. It's San Francisco, anything's possible, so, you know, beta breakers, whole it's nother <laughs> dimension. Um, Cheryl, thanks for joining us on theCUBE. I'll give you a final word. What's next for you? What's on, on your calendar look like? What big things are you going to knock down on a personal and professional level? Yeah, so next stop, Brazil. I'm leaving on Sunday oh. to go to Brazil and really drill down into what, what the possibilities right. are. But also, taking Capgemini to the next level with my women's leadership hat and really looking at what can we do here in San Francisco that's about yeah. leadership and innovation yeah. and highlighting it. Yeah, certainly have done amazing work and care has been fantastic as well. Remember our first yes. videos we've done, it was years ago, so much has happened and we're so excited. You know, we always show about women in tech, but we're so proud to broadcast such great Indeed. leaders. So we've had Kim Stevenson on, yourself, and it's just been fun to highlight those tech athletes. So, Congratulations, and of course, Thank let's you. do some crowd chats in, our, in the engagement container. Yep. Uh, some yeah. say the docker of social media. <laughs> 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 this is theCUBE, we are live in, in VMworld 2014, having a great time. Day three of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Stay with us, we'll be right back after this short break.